Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. For it is written that in the last days, the Christ will return like a thief in the night, taking his true believers to his Father on high. This one event is known to Christians as the rapture, thus fulfilling the prophetic second coming. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. <laughs> and in that flesh was the light of man that shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They called him the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, and yet he was denied by his own people and condemned to die on the cross under the governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate. Let her pass. She's his mother. On that day, this Jesus of Nazareth endured 18 hours of trial between the Jewish and Roman councils. He was whipped 40 times, stripped naked, mocked, and shamefully adorned with a crown of thorns by the Roman soldiers. My God! My God! Why hast thou forsaken me? Father, into thy hands I go. But it was not finished. It was only the beginning of a reign. The reign of the King of Kings, who promised he would one day return to take with him all who believe in the Son of Man. The light of the world. Hey! Tell me you, Jesus Christ. I don't buy it. Let me help Get you. your dirty hands off me. Look at you. How in the hell are you supposed to be Christ? You as black as me. Come on, brother. Come on. You know Christ wasn't no... Strong's G, 3526. Niger. Niger. Strong's G, 3526. Niger. Niger. Blackness is far more than perception, Andre. Blackness is also that which is inherited through ancestral lineage. It's irrelevant whether my skin color is light or dark. 
I am black because black ancestral blood flows through my veins. If the roots of the tree are black, then the fruit must be black. They met the master with blonde hair and blue eyes, just as you know him to be. But it is written, Daniel 7, verse 9, his hair was like the pure wool. For it is written, Andre, Revelations 1, verse 15, by my apostle John, who knew me and walked with me for three years of his life, it is written, his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. You must understand, my friend, that my father created me from all people, for all people. But you see, I am what I am. to believe that 25 years ago, my brother Frank, my sister Marlo and I, and a bunch of friends and family created a film called The Second Coming. We never knew 25 years later that people would still be asking questions about the film itself, The Second Coming, and that very recently, the film was inducted into the National Museum of African American History and Culture at the Smithsonian in DC. So here we are 25 years later. And what I found was when we shot the film back in the day, there were many questions about the image of Christ and the notion of the image of Christ. So we wanted to kind of really just explore that. And that's what our film did. So our film poses the question, what did Jesus look like? And does it matter what he even looked like? So, you know, at the time when we shot this film 25 years ago, I wanted to very much start a conversation. And, and we did. We took it all the way to the Phil Donahue show. And, some of you who may not remember the Phil Donahue show, it was the number one talk show on television before Oprah Winfrey. And we did an entire show about this movie, The Second Coming, and the notion of Jesus being a man of color. All right, question for our audience. What color was Jesus? That's right. Here's who's here. Blair Underwood joins us. Um, and it was fascinating because at one point people would say, well, that doesn't make sense. And others said, it does make sense. He was a man that grew up in the desert. It was a Middle Eastern man. How did, he be, how, did he, how did he come to have blonde hair and blue eyes? And how were those images changed? And then, then the conversation morphed to, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. Every culture creates Jesus or God in their own image. I, I, I tend to challenge that notion because my question is, if imagery doesn't matter, if the power of the image doesn't matter, and why were those images changed in the first place from a Middle Eastern man to one with blonde hair and blue eyes? So here we are right now in Florence, Italy. We're at the famous Duomo Cathedral. Uh, and we're in a city filled with history of iconic uh, pieces of art and artifacts by our greatest artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and many others. And many of those images were changed in this city on this continent. At the end of the day, what this film is about and what I wanted to say as a filmmaker and as an artist was that it doesn't matter what anyone looks like. It doesn't matter even what Jesus even looked like. What matters mostly is what does his heart look like? Listen, Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons. For real, and these were the children of Israel, according to Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel, according to 
Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.